In cooperation with Enid Public Schools in the city of Enid, welcome to Plainsman Football 2017 with Steve and Steve. I'm Steve Kime, along with the head coach of the Enid Plainsman, Coach Steve Hayes. The Plainsmen are coming off a district game loss last Friday night to the Midwest City Bombers by a score of 46 to 25. And if you witness the game or listen to the game on the radio, uh, you will recall that the play, uh, excuse me that the the Bombers uh, took the ball and went down and scored, and then. Uh, Plainsmen are unable to move the ball. Midwest City goes down and looks like they're going to score again. And uh, the Plainsmen come up with a huge stop. And besides the huge stop, they go down the length of the field and score. And the end of the first quarter is 7-6. to six. At halftime, it's a score of 21-12. to 12. And uh, again, the final is 46-25. to 25. Coach Hayes, uh, that had to be a proud moment for you to make that second uh, signature stop mm -hmm. and then to go all the way down and score. But your thoughts on, overall on the game? Well, first of all, you know, your, your um, assessment of, of Midwest City, I mean, they're, they're, they've got a fantastic football team. Uh, they're extremely athletic and talented in every position. Uh, they really don't have a weakness on any aspect of the field. Uh, and they, they play at a very high level. So we knew they were going to be a pretty tough opponent. In my opinion, they've got to be one of the favorites to win a state championship this year. Uh, they got a great quarterback, great offensive line, uh, really, really good defensive line and secondary. And so they're, they're just a complete football team. I don't know that they have a weakness and, and should do well in the playoffs. And so faced with that, I, I was really proud of our kids and the way that they played to win. They, they competed hard. We had just one stretch at the end of the third quarter in the first minute of the first, fourth quarter, about a three-minute stretch there where we gave up three scores that kind of um, put the game out of reach. Um, and, but other than those three minutes, our kids played to win, played hard, uh, and really I think uh, for anybody in the community that watched it, made them proud. What do you attribute those th quick three scores to? Couldn't, I, it couldn't be fatigue because... Uh, no, no, it wasn't really fatigue. I think more than anything else, Midwest City's explosiveness and athleticism. I mean, they're just a, they're a great football team. It's going to be hard yeah. for anybody to keep them contained uh, during an entire football game. You're going to probably have to score a lot of points to beat right. them because uh, they're going to be very capable. And scoring lots of points against them is difficult. They've got a, a great defense. So, so uh, definitely, definitely a, a well-coached team. Really like uh, the sportsmanship that their players display. I uh, really like um, uh, how well their coaches prepare them. And so just, uh, just an impressive program. Midwest City's really got it going on right now. Well, as you said, they're, I think they're rated second in yeah. Class 6A. Yeah. Yeah. Chances are you'll see them down the road. Yeah, uh, in, in the playoffs. In the playoffs. You bet. You bet. Well, Coach, um, each each week we have the privilege to see some of the highlights uh, on videotape for us. And here we can run those through the you know, television network. But before we show the, the actual um, – Highlights. Tell us what we're about to see. Well, you're going to see some great uh, tackles for losses by our defensive personnel. You're also going to see a forced turnover um, on, a, on a long pass that was really a big play. Uh, you're going to see several uh, great catches. We did a really good job of throwing the football, uh, which is which is pretty awesome given how well they rush the passer and how well they defend the receivers. And so we felt like we really had a lot of success throwing the football uh, last Friday night. And so you'll see several examples of that. Coach, I've been meaning to ask you this the last couple of weeks when, when your quarterback um, Jason Skimmager? Mason, yeah, Mason, Mason. Skimmager. Yep. Yep. Um, I just know that he, he can run 50 yards for a 10-yard gain. I know. The guy is so elusive. He really is. And my, my question to you, and especially with your receivers, in practice, are you practicing on just continue to try to get open? Yeah, if you'll notice, our receivers do a great job of working back towards the football. Yeah and working to the open areas and, and, and adjusting you, and you adjusting, adjusting to what Mason does. Uh, and it's really a, a testimony to our receivers of football intelligence. I just think that's some football IQ that our kids have. Because Mason is very elusive, but he at is. the same time, he's complimented with people as linemen to be able to mm -hmm. continue to block. Yeah. And then you have receivers that are moving to, to, uh, to open up. You know, it's interesting that you say that because one of the things we did for the Midwest City game, given the fact that their D-line is so good, is we actually put him on sprint out and put him on the run on purpose. Uh, because he did make so many big plays doing that, and he had some success uh, doing that uh, Friday night because of that. 
Well, again, Midwest City Bombers um, captured the win over the Plainsmen over last week's game. And let's, uh, let's see if we can get the uh, highlights on the screen at this time. Coach Hayes, and lead us through this, if you will. Uh, this is a great play. Um, screen pass. We throw back to the tight end, Lincoln Sessick. Uh, Austin and Ryan Sanchez do a great job of blocking out front here. Uh, big play for us on third down. Um, next play is a great sack. Uh, it's forced by Ivy Mace. Ivy comes off the edge. And they're trying to throw a screen here, but Brock drops back defends the screen and comes up and sacks the quarterback. Uh, great play by Brock as far as a good fundamental football. Here, this is a third and long. We throw a, a pass to Titan Stevens on a delayed end cut, and he does a really nice job of running after the catch. Then a real physical presence in the secondary force as far as breaking tackles. Um, here, we have another screen pass coming back to Titan again. Another great block by uh, Whitehead and, and Ryan Sanchez. Caleb Stanley's out in front as well. Uh, nice play by the big guys uh, getting out there. Here we're going to throw a quick uh, quick hitch to uh, Jared Williams. And you see a tremendous effort on his part to get into the end zone and score, break a tackle. Um, Jaden Palmer here is going to have a, a sack of the quarterback, breaks clean. And this quarterback was so elusive and, and uh, athletic, we were really uh, fortunate to be able to get pressure on him. I hear Hayden Priest as well is going to come through. I make a tackle on the quarterback inside linebacker and gets him wrapped up. thought we really limited their quarterback. To me, he was the key to their offense, and we pretty much limited him all night long as far as the impact he had on the game. Um, here uh, we have a, a great uh, tackle by Peyton Phillips to force a fumble. Damian Ryman recovers it uh, and takes a big play for them and turns it into a positive for us. That's a nice play. And then here, Jaden America on the little quick screen. Very elusive runner takes it in for the touchdown good, for the final score of the game. The yeah, edge. great job blocking on the perimeter so, by our receivers as well. Coach, when you look at those highlights, you, you can just see the athleticisms on both teams. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can yeah. see the size of that left tackle for, for Midwest City. Yeah, he's, he's just boy. as wide as he is tall. I mean yeah. that in all, a yeah. compliment. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you see a lot of athleticism out you there. You sure do. So. You sure do. Well, Coach, as you work your way to uh, the last game of the season mm -hmm. with Putnam City, and we'll talk about Putnam City a little bit more, um, you've pretty much have polished everything all year long. And mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, you know, early before the show, we were talking a little bit about what we're going to work on this week, and, and you mentioned about some fun things for memories. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, one of the things we'll do this week, we try to do with the kids at the end of the year, is we'll do things like uh, offensive and defensive linemen will do receiver and DB one-on-ones because they don't ever get to touch the ball and run routes. And so we'll let them have an opportunity to see who has the best best hands. And, and then we'll make the um, skill kids um, – participate in a, a field goal kicking contest. And the fun thing about that is the coaches participate as well, represent their skill groups. And so we'll have some fun at the end of practice doing that. And, and this will be on film, right? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no evidence. Okay. No blackmail. Okay. No, no blackmail. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we need to uh, meet some of the members of the Plainsman football team, and it sets the stage for us to meet our student athlete of the week. And we'll do that right now after we meet other members of the Plainsman team. I played Rover and I'm about to play 19. The Twin Commission, my number is 35, and I play linebacker and I'm class of 22. I'm Rashmi. I play uh, defensive end and I'm a senior. Ethan Armstrong, number 15, quarterback, class of 22. Uh, Brian Hernandez, number 62. I play O line and class of 2019. Ronan Ford, number 72. I play a line of class 2019. Welcome back to Plainsman Football, the coach's show with Steve and Steve. Our special segment again today is where we get to introduce a student athlete. And uh, the athlete for this week is Caleb Chambers, number 81. Caleb, thank you for being here today. Thank appreciate, you, Steve. Appreciate you being here. And um, Coach Hayes has a few questions lined up. It's not necessarily 20 questions, but it's close to it. So hang on. Here we go. Yeah, we'll get at least 19 in. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really exciting for me to have Caleb on the show today. He has been such a tremendous member of our program in the last three years. Uh, actually moved here uh, with an Air Force family from New Mexico, I believe, and, and uh, was homeschooled prior to, to becoming a student in high school. So that was a pretty dramatic transition for him. And uh, one thing I think that uh, Caleb has been all along has been a leader. Uh, he's done a great job of, of modeling the uh, values of integrity, and not only that, but trying to help teach his teammates to do the same. Uh, uh, Caleb came to me as a sophomore and asked if he could lead a, a Bible study uh, with, the, with the teammates. And as a sophomore, 
uh, was uh, going through values and things like that with, with juniors and seniors on our football team who were, who were player leaders. And I think that showed a lot of courage on his sure. part and a lot of uh, a strength of character. Uh, has just been that type of kid all along. Now, Caleb, um, you you have not really been a varsity starter until this year. Uh, you've had to work your way and earn it, uh, which I think is a good thing. But talk a little bit about the transition over the last three years and, and what you've done to become a varsity football player this year. Yes, sir. Well, I started out uh, as a sophomore. I came in, new, new kid on the team, and I was you know immediately put into JV, and I had to basically work my way up from there. I remember um, running a lot of scout team, and that's what yeah. got me a – uh, I, I kept asking coach if I could be on the travel team, and he said, um, "You know, you'll, your time will come." So I just kept running scout team, and I did quite well against, uh, you know, preparing our our varsity then when I was mm -hmm. a sophomore for yeah. the game. So that's how I got on the travel squad. So I, I think it was the third game of the mm -hmm. season I, I, I um, got to travel with the team, and then um, last year as a junior, I did a lot of the same. I was second string, um, helped a lot, helped the team prepare a lot, and. Uh, Got a couple reps in. I played special teams mainly, and a few offensive reps. But um, you know, it was, it was a uphill climb, but uh, it was definitely worth it. Uh, uh, I think I would have rather worked for it than just having given to me. I, I, I like the aspect that um, you know I had to put in the work to get yeah. the position. You know, and Caleb's a great example too of the value of performing on scout team because what he's saying is true. He got in a scout team and performed really well. He became known for catching the football and taking a big hit and catching it in traffic. And, and, and you watch his video this year on the varsity. He makes a lot of the, the tougher catches uh, in traffic just because of the training he's had. So I'm real proud of that. Now, you're involved in a lot of different things. Give us an example of things that you do outside of football. Uh, well, like you mentioned, I, I led a Bible study with the team, and then I turned into FCA. Um, so I did help uh, do that for um, the, the school. So I had um, members from other athletic prog um, programs in the school come to that. I attend Emmanuel Baptist Church, so I help uh, – lead a youth group for sixth grade uh, boys there mm -hmm. and I um, attend on Sunday mornings. I've been on multiple mission trips with them. Um, it's a great time. I have um, lots of fun with uh, Pastor Abe and Pastor Wade. Um, I also do, uh, I'm in a couple um, academic programs like National Honor Society so I help uh, with things like that and student council so I do a lot of stuff outside of school with student council um, and then I, I like to hang out with my friends and play basketball and do my homework. So. Yeah, if I remember correctly, you were on a mission trip this summer to Eastern Europe. Yes, right? yeah. to Poland. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's that's pretty pretty awesome. Now, um, tell tell the folks a little bit about what you want to do when you graduate in May, because you got big plans, which is not a surprise. Yes, sir. So right now, I'm uh, trying to get into the Air Force Academy. Um, so it's a long process, a lot of interviews with senators and representatives, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully um, get in for my the fall semester of 2018. Um, hopefully, I hope to play football there as well. At least walk on and try. Mm -hmm. um, and then, if I I have planned if if I don't get into the Air Force Academy, I want to get the an ROTC scholarship to go to another ch college of my choice, um, preferably OSU or um, TCU, possibly. So now you've already gotten a nomination from uh, one of our senators, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. My parents are um, residents, residents of Florida, uh -huh. so I got a nomination with um, Marco Rubio, okay. the senator in Florida. That's impressive. So yeah, I've been interviewing with him. Get back, he'll get back with me sometime in December to uh, you know finalize the whole details. So. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, what great you know exposure and experience just to go through the process. Yeah. Most folks just don't even get to step one. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Caleb, my question for you is. Uh, you've already just outlined the the challenge and the the roller coaster experience for three years of and the discipline to play and to practice and always to be there and to show up so what will you take away from this high school experience of playing football and also under the tutelage of coach steve hayes yeah co i mean coach has taught me a lot it's been a i'm very blessed to have him as my coach um you know it's a it was a he's a great guy and he's taught me many life lessons probably the biggest one um, is just you know to always uh, do your best and to strive every day to get out and um, work hard so that you can reach your full potential. So always um, put in the work, always do the little things. You know everything. You, you don't. Um, you're not going to get to where you want to be unless you put in the work to do it. Yeah. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Correct. Exactly right. And that's even on a first down, right? Yeah, exactly <laughs> if it was right. easy, everyone did. it. Yeah. Our student athlete of the week is Caleb Chambers, number 81. Uh, catches a lot of the uh, 
balls that are thrown his direction. So, Caleb, thank you for taking time to be with us today on the Coach's Show. We appreciate it. We wish you the best. And uh, that's impressive. Air Force Academy will just continue to believe that that's where you will, you will end up. And you said your grandfather was a graduate of the Air Force Academy, correct? Yes, sir. He went there, I think he graduated in 1973. He played basketball on the, the team back, uh, back before the three-point line. So yeah. he had a lot of fun there. He likes to tell me all his stories. So. <laughs> that's great. Well, and you will have stories as well. So, mm-hmm. Caleb, thank you for sir. being here today. Okay, we need to take this time out of our, our show, and we need, need to meet some of the assistant coaches that we've done throughout the year, and let's do that right now. I'm Kareem Sears. I coach defensive line and DNs. Um, I am a special needs teacher at the high school. My favorite book is Slapstick by Kurt Vonnegut, and my most influential person would be my dad, because pretty much everything he's told me when I was younger has happened in my life. My name is Jeremy Brashears. I'm a defensive line coach at the high school, where I will be teaching Algebra 1. My favorite book is The Traveler's Gift by Andy Andrews. And the biggest influence in my life was the FFA organization, where many people taught me the leadership skills necessary to do the job that I do. Hey, I'm uh, Coach Dusty Quarles. I coach corners at Enid High School. I teach uh, world history at Enid High School. Uh, favorite book is 112263 by Stephen King. Uh, favorite movie, really anything with uh, Clint Eastwood. I, I guess if I had to pick, I'd say Heartbreak Ridge. Um, the people that have influenced me the most in my life are definitely my parents, Johnny and Wendy Quarles. Uh, they taught me all the core values I have today, how to be a man, how to lead, and uh, you know, appreciative to them every single day. Welcome back to Plainsman Football 2017 with Steve and Steve. Thank you for joining us each week. And uh, throughout the week, as the show continues to, to replay throughout the Enid Television Network on Channel 11, also 111. Well, our X's and O segment, Coach, mm-hmm. yeah. Chalk Talk, um, kickoff philosophy, if I could just frame it that way. If you follow the Plainsman at all, you will notice that um, there's a, oh, what, what is it? It's not trickery, but it's a, it's a, a planned science with your mm. your kickoff, yeah. because it looks like you're getting ready to kick off, and then the kicker stops, and then there's change of formation, and they line up and go again, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. But the, it seems like the end result is um, a high, but short, off to chances are the sideline, a kick. Yeah. Versus the old kick it through the uprights, kick yeah. it as far and deep as you can. Explain. Uh, the kickoff philosophy. You know, I, th- I think over the last 10 years in, f- in high school football and somewhat in college football, the opportunities that kickoffs present have, have kind of have kind of changed the philosophy that coaches use with kickoffs. And before, you just get a kicker and kick it out of the end zone. Yeah. And if you can guarantee that you can kick the ball out of the end zone and put an opponent on the 20-yard line, that, that's, a, I mean, that's, that's not a bad option. But you know, a lot of times in high school, you don't have a kid that necessarily can do that with sure. consistency. And what you do is you end up kicking to their very best athlete. And... They end up getting the ball on your on, on their 40-yard line or 45-yard line uh, because it's so difficult to cover them. I mean, it just is. Right. It, you know, the very best thing you want as a coach is to put your best athlete in space, and a kickoff does that if you don't kick it correctly. And so, what a lot of coaches, including our, ourselves, have done is we've designed intentionally kicks that are high, hard to catch, and aimed at people that struggle to catch them the most, with a hope of maybe gaining an extra possession because they drop it and we recover it. They let it hit the ground and we recover it. Uh, and really trying to kick to some open spots as well, um, and and make make people who are preparing for the kickoff have to prepare for a lot of different things, uh, which means they're not spending time working on their deep return and, and things that they could do to hurt you. They really kickoff return really becomes a defensive play now rather than an offensive play, right. which I think is to the advantage of the kicking team. Uh, and then you know over the course of the season you'll pick up three, four, five possessions uh, doing that. Now the thing that we do at the beginning where we fake the onside rush. Sure. Uh, the, the idea behind that is if they don't bring people in to match our numbers, we'll onside that. If they do bring people in to match our numbers, we'll back up and then we'll, we'll do one of our pooch kicks, whatever we have, we have called. But, but if they just have one guy standing there and they don't bring the other guys in, we'll go ahead and kick that onside kick and we'll attack them with 10 people and have a very high percentage of, of recovering that kick. Uh, we did that against Stillwater a week ago. Um, and re- the kicker ended up recovering his own kick because the guys beside him took out the first guy. They blocked him and he was able to pick up the ball that he just kicked for uh, uh, our possession. Well, you're right. It's such um, 
an offensive play, if you will, yeah, yeah. versus the old way of just kicking it deep and yeah. just – and chances are it was going to go to the, the, the best player on the yeah. team, and he was going to run it back 80 yards yeah. for a score. Yeah. But now you have an opportunity, as you said, kicking it maybe to a lineman. Yep. He goes, oh, my word, this ball is coming towards me. What do I do? Not used to feeling it, yeah. <laughs> and yep. he keeps looking up at that ball, realizing people are running at him at full speed. And so. what happens <laughs> is, is they'll put some people on the field that are good at catching balls, but they're not as good as blocking. And so now you have uh, an yeah. advantage as far as covering the kick. And so definitely a lot of thought that goes behind it. It's just not line up and boot it. Very good. Well, that's our Chalk Talk segment for today. And uh, we need to take another time out and to uh, meet more members of the Plainsman football team. Let's do that right now. My name is Tyree Snell, my number is 25. I play receiver, right receiver and corner, and I'm class of 2020. Ryan Sanchez, 43, defensive line, 18 linebacker. Lincoln Sessick, 88, wide receiver, senior. My name is Caleb Stanley, number 77, I play defensive tackle, class of 2020. My name is Chris Gilmore, number 18, kicker and receiver, sophomore. My name's Jaden Palmer, number 75, defensive tackle and linebacker, class of 2018. Welcome back to Plainsman Football. Special guest today and each and every week, Coach Steve Hayes of Enid Plainsman Football. I'd like to remind you, if you have a, co a question for Coach Hayes, you can send it to asksteve at enid.org. That's A-S-K-S-T-E-V-E -E at enid.org. And, and Coach, that's kind of directed to me, too. So if, if you don't mind, I'll read your emails. Okay. Or you can read my emails okay. e either way. All but right. we're All covered. Right. Anyway, send us a note, and I'll make sure Coach Hayes gets that. I'd like to, uh, well, remind you that we just have uh, the, the one re remaining game with Putnam City on the, the schedule for the Plainsman. And so for this Friday night, Putnam City comes to town, the Pirates. They uh, were um, in a district game last week, Stillwater, mm -hmm. and I believe the outcome of that was 39-32, Stillwater beating Putnam City. What do you know about the Pirates? Well, the Pirate the Pirates are very talented. Um, I think they're know. six and three on the year and yeah, three and three in district. They're three and three in district. They okay. they've lost the last two district games. They're kind of struggling a little bit. Early in the year they beat Bixby, which was a big win, yeah. and they're kind of a kind of a preseason favorite to win our district. And and they've struggled a little bit the last couple of weeks, but that that doesn't uh, hide the fact that they're. Very, very talented football team. They have a defensive lineman, Ron Tatum. Uh, he's number 19. For those that are coming out the game Friday night, he's 6'5", 260, already committed to OU. Uh, they have another defensive lineman, number 74, who's a junior. He's 6'4", about 235, has multiple Division One offers. Uh, they probably have the best linebacker we faced this year, uh, number 55. He's 6'2", 220, just a tremendous football player, playmaking, playmaking machine. And so they're going to present some real challenges for our offensive line this week. Um, offensively, outstanding quarterback in Newsom. Lefty, who moved from Allen, Texas, to, to play there at Putnam City and has had a lot of success this year, already thrown over 2,000 yards. Uh, and a really good receiver in number 15, big play guy. And so um, they, they, uh, they tend to score a lot of points throwing the football. They're more of a passing team uh, than a running team, which is a little different than what we've seen the last couple of weeks. We've seen teams that really like kind of pound the ball. Uh, and, and defensively, they're physical, too. We're going to have to spread the field out and uh, get to the perimeter and take advantage of our perimeter speed and stay away from some of their um, uh, really good players. Uh, not tempt fate with those kids. It's a big night for us Friday night. It's our senior night. Such a special group of seniors. Uh, you've met so many of them uh, over the course of the year on this show. Uh, really want to send them out in style, send them out with a victory. It's been a long time since uh, Enid has won four football games in a season since 2012. Really like to, to break that barrier. Putnam City right now is, uh, I think, number four in the state. Would love to be a, be the top five team. Um, uh, going into uh, uh, the end of the year and really have some things hang their hands on. So, Jaron Williams is five receptions away from setting the season record for most receptions in a season. Right now he's sitting at um, uh, 60 and 64 is the record and so really would love to break that record as well um, going into uh, the off season. Well, Coach, each week when we talk about the uh, the opponent that's upcoming, you're always well versed. You know about the opponent and so forth. Um, in preparation for the week, we you know that they throw, they run, a couple of big guys going to OU and multiple yeah, offers stuff bet. like that. You so bet. you know you know very extensively about the team. So how do you prepare uh, for this team or any team really 
when it comes to uh, the week? You know, when, when we uh, look at video on the weekend, we actually grade their players. And so by we grade them like okay. we grade our own. And so by doing that, we have a really good sense of who on their, their, their football team is really good. Uh, and who, who's not as good. And we try to, to formation people and, and get the ball in people's hands uh, going against defenders that are, are they're least likely to have success. Um, I guess in a way we kind of pick on kids. Um, like, for example, this week, uh, Putnam City, uh, they have a corner, number 13, fantastic football player. Uh, probably would rather throw the other way. Uh, if we're going to throw the football as if, if much as possible to formation things and throw towards the, the other corner rather than uh, throw at 13 when you know one's not as good as, a, as the other one, you want to go after the one that's not as good and improve your probability of success. Uh, we've used a lot of different exotic formations in the last month to kind of get people out of position and set up some advantages for us as far as angles and who we're attacking. Uh, and so I think there's a lot of thought that goes into what you're doing in relationship to that. Uh, we've done some things this year that's different because of Mason Scrimmager's mobility in terms of spreading out the defense and giving him some room to operate in space where, you know, he's not as tall. He has a difficult time when, when everybody's packed in there seeing. But when we spread everybody out and allow him to move and use his mobility, he really has some success. And so it's really kind of tailoring what you do to uh, your kids and, and the strengths and, and weaknesses of the team that you're playing. And we, we spend a lot of time, you know, we actually send the coaches home with homework. They spend multiple hours studying, and then we all come back and meet and report and begin to devise our plan based on that report. The Putnam City Pirates come to town. As Coach Hayes said, it's senior night, so we encourage everybody to attend the last home game of the season as the Putnam City Pirates come to town for, again, a district game. Well, Coach, we're, we're going to take another time out. Okay. We don't want to remind everybody of, of the times of, that the show uh, replays, but we're going to talk a little bit more about character when we come back. And Love it. And we'll do that right after this. Welcome back to our final segment today with the uh, Coach's Show with Steve and Steve. I want to say special thanks to our friends at On Deck, uh, Gary and Jeff Williams. They're uh, very faithful in the last few years of helping us set the studio and even including a TCU helmet for yeah. Coach Hayes so he would feel at home. You bet. So anyway, so to Gary and Jeff, thank you very much, folks out at On Deck. Integrity, mental toughness, discipline, accountability, love one another. It's been the character emphasis throughout uh, the season, and I think you said this week's character emphasis was? Gratitude. Gratitude. Yeah, the power of gratitude and how it affects your perspective and the way you view your life. You know, uh, I, I strongly believe that we are, are much more blessed and are much better off than we realize most of the time. And, you know, it's with fondness that we have a lot of memories. We, we kind of realize in retrospect how good we had it after after it's done. And, you know, gratitude, I really think, brings that into focus in the moment. And, you know, we've been very fortunate this year to coach a group of kids that have played so hard, that have looked at every adversity and challenge as far as injury and setback and, and never backed down. Uh, I don't I don't know uh, how we could have had more fun than what we had other than, than winning more games, obviously. But just really, really proud of our kids and very grateful uh, for how they've hung in there and worked hard and, and really improved over the course of the year. And that's not always the case when you struggle during the football season. Uh, you know, grateful for the health that we have, the kids that we have to coach, our families. Just so much to be grateful for, and we're going to focus on that this week. Oftentimes when we struggle, <clears throat> it seems to be uh, half, you know. Half what, empty. Yeah, half yeah, empty instead yeah. of the half full. Yeah. Coach Hayes, thank you for your time today. It's always thank good you. to see you. Appreciate yeah. you being here. Thank you for joining us for Plainsman Football, <clears throat> excuse me, 2017. I'm all choked up with that, uh, that talk on gratitude. So let's have a gratitude week. Again, thank you for being with us on the Coach's Show. See you Friday night at Selby Stadium as uh, Putnam City comes to town to uh, take on the Enid Plainsman. Have a good week, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching Enid Plainsman Football with Steve and Steve on ETN. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go.